Hello everybody, this is David with another Verilog video. This time I'm going to do a simple D flip-flop, just for anybody who wants to learn about that. So I'm just, I'm going to create the flip-flop. I'm going to, I created a simulation for it. I'm going to simulate it here in Vivado and show you the waveform. And then I also have a constraints file. I'm going to uh, run the synthesis implementation, generate the bit stream, and then put it onto the basis three, and then check the operation of it on the basis three as well. So here I'll go through the code. This is a simple D flip flop. You just have an input of a clock, um, the data coming in, the data bit, and an enable signal to enable writing to the flip flop, and then the output Q, which is a register which is the data stored in the flip-flop. Um, down here is the logic, so always at the pause edge clock. If enable is high, then Q becomes whatever D is. And that's just simple D flip-flop. Here's the simulation. Um, create a register for each of the inputs and a wire to capture the data on the output. Instantiate the device under test. I just named it DFF. Um, all the names are the same. Create here, I create the clock. So after two simulation ticks, we'll invert the clock. So this is in essence a four simulation tick period clock. Here's the initial block where we're gonna test the flip-flop. Initialize all the registers. I'm gonna initialize enable to one. So at the first pause edge clock, um, we can set a value for Q. Because right now, as soon as you run the simulation, there's no value for Q because we're starting the clock at zero and a pause edge doesn't happen until after two simulation ticks, it'll get inverted to a one. And Q is not gonna, you'll see that in the simulation. But so after five ticks and <clears throat> right before a pause edge clock, we'll set enable back to zero. Then we'll wait um, one clock period. So every now, Every clock period is right before a pause edge clock. We'll enable it. We'll set data to one. We'll set data to zero. We'll set, well, enable was already one there. Um, data equal to one. And we'll set enable equal to zero. And then we'll set data equal, or enable equal to zero data. So we can check and see if the value of Q changes. It shouldn't with enable off. And then after four ticks, we'll finish. Here's the simulation. Here's the clock at the top in white, the enable signal in yellow. Data is here in the aqua blue, and then Q is in green. But it has this little red right here. Because like I said, Q is, at it's the value is X in Verilog, which is an undetermined signal. Signal. So the now that the enable signal is on at the first clock edge, whatever data is, Q will become. So now right here at this pause edge clock, Q becomes knows its value now it becomes zero so then continuing on I turn off enable here turn it back on set data equal to one and then that this pause edge clock Q becomes one so that's good um, then right here before this pause edge I send data down low and then at the pause edge Q goes down low again um, we're still enabled here, set data to one, Q becomes one. And then we turn enable off and then try and, and set data off and then, but Q holds its value of one. So the flip flop is working. And so we're gonna test that on an FPGA. Here's a constraints file, the 100 megahertz clock coming in, it's just called clock to match all the names on the ports of this module, the data coming in, the enable signal and the Q going out to an LED. These are both being controlled by switches. I've already generated the bitstream. Now I'm going to program the board and I'll show you it working on the basis three. All right, so the basis three is programmed. Here it is. This first LED is what our Q is. This switch is going to be our data. It's not enabled. This switch over here the third one is our enable. So now when it's enabled, whatever D is, Q should be. And you'll see, you can see that when D goes high, so does Q. When D goes low, Q goes low. So as long as it's enabled, 
Q becomes D. We can latch in a zero, turn enable off. We can set data to zero, but Q has been latched. So there you have a D flip-flop in Verilog simulated and implemented on a Basis 3 FPGA. Thanks for watching.